You live in an amazing and expanding universe. But I'm sorry to say you are insignificant. <laughs> you are insignificant in terms of space. Our sun is just one tiny star in our Milky Way galaxy that counts about 200 billion other stars. And guess how many galaxies there are in the universe? 170 billion. You are also insignificant in terms of time. To illustrate the duration of the human species, Carl Sagan invented the cosmic calendar. It's simply the 13.8 billion years of cosmic evolution that is compressed into one year. So the Big Bang starts in January, our Milky Way galaxy appears mid-March, life appears at the end of September, and now I want you to guess in your head, when do you think the last dinosaur died? In your head. And, <laughs> and when do you think the human species appeared? The answer is December 30th for the dinosaur and December 31st at 10.30 p.m for the human species. <laughs> and the history we learn at school, which represents about 10,000 years, represents only 20 seconds in this cosmic calendar. <laughs> so it's time that we learn about our big history. But we are also insignificant because we are all going to die. And I mean not just us as human beings. I mean that the sun also is going to exhaust its fuel, and in about five billion years, it will turn into a red giant star, and it will make the oceans boil. So life will be wiped out. You may think there is an easy solution. We just build a spacecraft and we go to another star. But this doesn't work. This only delays the problem, because all stars in all galaxies will eventually exhaust their fuel. And in the end, the universe will run out of fuel and get cold and dark and is going to die. Yes, the universe is going to die. And this result is guaranteed by one of the most fundamental laws of physics, which is the second law of thermodynamics. It says that the, the total entropy can only increase, the total entropy or disorder. So I don't know how, how you feel about this picture, but physicists generally conclude that life is just a meaningless accident in a dying universe. I wanted to, to study astrophysics when I was in high school uh, because I was so curious about the universe, but I'm glad I, I didn't. Um, and actually, when, when, um, when I was studying physics in high school, um, I was asking my physics teacher difficult conceptual questions, and, um, and she was answering me, but why don't you just take the equations and solve the, the exercise? <laughs> so I'm glad I studied philosophy, because the questions I'm most passionate about are foundational. They are at the frontier of science. And so I am interested in questions such as, um, where are we going in the far future? Are we significant in the universe? And today, I want to show you that we are significant in the universe. We need to look at the universe through the lens of complexity, and not only through the lenses of space, time, and entropy. Indeed, the universe is not only creating entropy and disorder, it's also creating life. Think about the evolution of life on Earth. It has complexified from single cells to our amazing technological society today. So to make it very simple, the bad guy, it's entropy. It's a rise in disorder. The good guy, it's life. It's the increase in complexity. Who is going to win in the end? This is the most fascinating question you can ask 
about the universe. And this is where I want to take you today. And we'll start first with the past and then go to the future. Indeed, we need to understand the past to be able to envision the future. And we need to envision the future to find hope and significance in the universe. So how does life fight against entropy? It does so through revolutions in energy, information and control. What was the most significant revolution that happened four billion years ago? It's the origin of life. Life first invents metabolism, which is the capability to extract energy from the environment and reject waste and disorder. This is possible thanks to the most primitive informational structure, which is the cell boundary, that makes a difference between the inside and the outside. And then the cell processes are gradually controlled by RNA and DNA molecules. Okay, we'll go towards the future, so we'll go right to the, next, uh, to the last second of the cosmic calendar. What was the most significant event that happened 200 years ago? It's the first industrial revolution with the invention of the steam engine. This goes with the invention of the printing press, and we start to see new um, ways of control, which are the nation states and also the market economy. What was the most significant revolution that happened 100 years ago? It's the second industrial revolution with the invention of electricity. New means of communication, such as the telephone, radio or TV. And the control starts to be by multinational corpor corporations. So where are we heading now? I think we all feel that our world is changing, but it's very, it's very hard to predict the future. Also because we are involved. The future will depend on what we choose to do. But actually, um, futurist Jim Dator said that we can predict the kind of images we build about the, futures, the future. And he says that there are four generic images about the future. The first is simply growth. Well, don't worry, things will just continue to grow as they, as they are growing now. The second is collapse. We don't have enough resources. Our, uni our, our Earth is, is going to collapse, well, our civilization is doomed. The third is discipline. Well, we don't have infinite resources, but we can avoid collapse if we manage to build a sustainable society, if we manage our resources better. And the fourth is transformation. Well, look at technology, at the internet. Our world is changing radically. We are heading towards a singularity. My own working hypothesis is towards transformation scenarios. Why? Because we have seen so many revolutionary transformations in cosmic evolution that I can't see why it's, it should stop now. So what is the transformation we are at now? It's the global brain civilization. It's the idea that humans and machines are currently merging to form a new level of intelligence and complexity at a planetary scale. The information, that leads, the information revolution that leads this transition is clearly the Internet. I think it's clear it has changed our, our way of communication. The future of energy is solar because it has much more potential than any other alternative. And the control starts to be um, planetary. Think of, of about um, GPS technologies, for example. And it starts also to be decentralized and distributed. For example, no single person can switch off the internet. Not even Donald Trump in a mood swing. <laughs> so let's keep the cosmic perspective. Is the global brain the end of cosmic evolution? Of course not. It's likely to be just one transition. But as we go into the deeper and deeper future, it becomes harder. 
to imagine what could come next. But one source of inspiration is science fiction. And if you've seen uh, Star Wars 7, there is a, a new weapon that is introduced, which is called the Star Killer Base, where basically um, there is a planet that sucks in energy for, from a star. And this is clearly inspired by uh, known binary star systems in our galaxy that look like that, where uh, a dense body sucks in energy. And they are therefore called sometimes vampire stars, or they have deadly spider names such as redbacks or black widows. However, when I first saw this, these systems, I thought, well, this looks like a metabolism. There is ingestion of energy and production of entropy with the jets that you see here. So, since 2011, I've developed this idea and I'm trying to test it. But as I was taking it more and more seriously, I felt depressed. Indeed, what, what is the meaning of everything we do on Earth in comparison to other civilizations that are literally eating stars? How ridiculous are we compared to them? But still, in, the, in case it would be correct, I wanted to give a positive image um, beyond vampires and, 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 and killing spiders. So I settled for the, wo for the um, word stellivore, which is the Latin for star eater, and I chose a hummingbird as an image, which is uh, the bird with the highest metabolic rate on Earth. So to summarize, a stellivore would be able to use energy from a star actively. Its information processes is totally unknown. Its control is likely to be a pulsar position, positioning system that we know exists in our galaxy, and that works pretty much like GPS, but on a galactic scale. OK, but our core problem is still unfinished. The universe is still going to die. What could a super-advanced civilization do about it? Well, let's get inspiration from biology. All organisms die, but before they die, they also reproduce. So a truly advanced civilization would start to care about the death of the, of the universe and make a new universe. To do this, it would need enough energy to trigger a Big Bang 2.0. It would need a, a blueprint of a new universe, and it would be controlled by the very advanced civilization. OK, let's wrap up. We've seen how life fights against entropy through revolutions in energy, information, and control. We've seen three transformation scenarios for the far future. The global brain civilization, which is the merging of humans and machines on a planetary scale. The stellivore civilizations that are able to eat stars. And the universe-making civilizations that care about the greatest problem of all, which is the death of our universe. To conclude, I want to say that we are significant. If we look at the universe through the lens of complexity, and not only through space, time, and entropy. We are significant even more so if we are alone in the universe, because that would mean that the complexity we have here is very rare and precious, and that we need to take great care of it. We are significant because we are alive, and as such, we are creators of order and fighters of disorder. Our mission in the universe is to continue the growth of complexity. We are significant because, informed by our big history, we can create a big future. Thank you.